Welcome, my future YouTubers. We're talking about a video hot off the presses here today. The Church of the Debate Me Bro with Gushin. Uh, I tend to like Gushin, although she's kind of gone... Mm. I know if she ever sees this, she'll hate me for it. She's gone kind of woke scoldy lately, but she generally has some uh, some good things to say, some good thoughts. So we will uh, we'll give her a shot here, see what she has to say. I know there was a lot of recent controversy, a lot of recent discourse about, and it's it's ongoing about how people like Destiny and Vosh and Xander Hall, uh, those are the big three, uh, bring people to the left but they don't properly indoctrinate them is basically the argument and i i know that that's really that's really reductionist a really reductionist way of saying it uh but basically their argument is that these people bring uh people to the left who maybe have some reactionary thoughts or thinking and don't do anything to correct that this is patently untrue Destiny is pretty good about policing his community of actual bigoted thought, except against lefties. Vosh is very good about policing his community for reactionary and bigoted speech and thought. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people jumping on about reactionary, uh, reactionary thought police or anything like that. And the point is, is that we can only go by what people say and how they act to things. We can't know what's in someone's mind. But you can generally get the tenor of a community by how they react to certain things. And one of the major reactions that we see from Vosh's community is when he gets edgy, his community pushes back. They don't enable him, they don't encourage him, they push back. So watch any video where he uses the R slur and see the red frogs fill up his chat as everyone calls him out for it. Now, it's about 50% meme at this point, but the fact of the matter is, is that Vosh has... And, and full disclosure, I came from Vosh's community. Vosh have, was heavily influential in radicalizing me and me finding a voice in online discourse. So I'm going to be somewhat biased towards Vosh, but I recognize that bias and I try to try to, and I'm, I think I'm pretty good at recognizing when I'm, when my bias is inf interfering with me seeing an argument. So without any further poisoning the well, let's, let's uh, see what Gushin has to say here. Hello brothers, sisters, and noble enbies, and welcome to another sermon from the church of the debate me bros. Now, even the new people to this convent, I'm sure, must have heard the recent outcries by the populace against our great and mighty overlords. And I just wish to say that even in this troublesome time, it's important that we understand the enemies and those who would dare to speak out against us. That is why I have gathered up this document, the issues that these anti-debate me growers have laid out within a single parchment. Now, for those who don't know as well, because there are, I see, a couple of new people here, Debate Me Bro are a race of superior beings, ones whose powers of logic and fundamental argumentation take them beyond an average human and allow them to destroy their enemies in the marketplace of ideas. Through doing that... Okay... First issue, debate me bros are not people who think they're, and, and I understand he, she's doing the performative hyperbole here, but debate me bros, this is something Vosh has said numerous times, Xander Hall and Destiny, debates are not about convincing your opponent, they're about convincing your opponent's audience or some portion of it. That's why you have Vosh talking to people like uh, J.F. Giuseppe yesterday, Sargon of Akkad, Stephen Molyneux, uh, why he went on the, uh, the Ralph Retort, the, the kill stream, a year ago when he was much smaller than he is now. Because he believes he, it, it, it's shown to pretty much be true, he has the rhetorical skill to show why those people are wrong. Now, he's not 
laboring under the delusion that he's going to convince his opponents, but there may be some people in the audience who are maybe a little, little on the edge, a little like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I like what he says, but you know, this doesn't jive with this other experience I have, or, you know, I learned about this in school and that doesn't jive. And then you see them get blown out by Vosh and like, oh, God, I'm such an idiot. Yeah, I knew that guy was a fucking moron. Let's see what this Vosh has to say. He seemed like a cool, fun guy. That they absorb elements of the other person's audience, bringing them over to our flock. Through this, we can hopefully expand our ideas and our beliefs upon these new brothers, sisters, and envies. And by doing so, Eventually, we can take over the world with our religion. Now, all of these are normally great things, but as laid out within this document, people seem to have some issues with the inherent ideas behind some of that stuff. So I want to just go over those right now. The first one is around the concept of debate me bros and the difficulty of conceding or accepting defeat or being wrong and learning from those mistakes. Quite often, they will instead go into a rage, as is their want, for they are gods. But people say that maybe we shouldn't allow them to do that. Maybe they should actually instead take some quiet time of reflection about what they were being criticised for and to learn from that. But the problem is that a Debate Me Bro's inherent demand and inherent capability and the reason why people watch them in the first place comes from the fact that they are right. That they are, have proved... No. No, Gushin. God. I feel really shitty about this because I think Gushin does some good work. But I, I have to disagree here that particularly the debate me bros that I have seen, when they are presented with legitimate criticism about their behavior with legitimate arguments... They have no problem adjusting their behavior. The issue is a lot of times someone, they'll, they'll say something or a clip will get posted and it'll just be a bunch of, ooh, ee, yikes, ouch, ooh, bad take, this isn't it, chief. Ooh, ow, yeah, ow, ooh, bad, bad take, bad, ooh, yeah. That kind of shit. And when they ignore that or, you know, make some, performative strength piece feeding off of that, then it's seen as them dismissing criticism. As an excellent example, one of the uh, recent major controversies that Vosh has been embroiled in, about a week ago he had a debate on one of his game streams with a uh, black nationalist. Now Vosh's understanding at the beginning of the conversation was that black nationalism was functionally the same as white nationalism, except obviously trying to create a, a black ethnostate. He was mistaken, was corrected on that, and said as much in that stream. He said that if what black nationalists are trying to create is economic and social independence, for black people within our community, within our society, then he is 100% in support of it. You know, they can do, you know, not, not in the they need my approval or go forth my son way, but in the way that any internet commentator approves of something. I mean, he's not saying he can stop it even if he disagrees with it. He's saying that he will, for whatever it's worth, support it if that is their goals. A number of people took clips out of context of him making those arguments and some other arguments within the, the context of it, basically saying that he was saying, hey, uh, yeah, I don't give a fuck about black culture, I don't give a fuck about this, and uh, black nationalists are, are the same as Nazis, and blah, 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 blah. And it's been this ongoing discourse. But again, he was presented with a... a cogent argument, solid evidence, and changed his views. This is not the behavior that you would expect from the way Gushin is describing these debate me bros. And I've seen this happen multiple times. So this is, this is the straw man debate me bro. Proven to be successful in the tournament of blood sports of the online networks, and that if they lose, then they lose a bit of that aura of immortality and invincibility. 
And that's the aura that really keeps people coming over to them. People like to be on the winning side. If you are not the winning side, people aren't really going to come over to you as easily or as well as you might otherwise. So there is a level of not accepting defeat or fighting back so hard against defeat to the very, very end that it just shows you as bitter or resentful and also coming off the saying ridiculous things because you just don't want to say that you're wrong. Obviously, this doesn't apply to all of the debate me bro gods, as some of them are much more capable of accepting their wrongs, and to use that as a way of building their image and brand as someone who can learn from their mistakes, and can use that as a way to fuel their inner fire to take on more heretics. And that, that also is, but yet again, when you work that into how your brand works, then, then you can do that in a way that's successful. It's just, it, it does come down to, yet again, all this is branding stuff, right? I mean... We're a church. Um, the big thing is we're trying to appeal to people here. So if we're not appealing to people through this uh, in good marketing, then what are we doing? That was the first big issue was that they, they have issues with accepting defeat, with, with actually taking on board criticisms. And that is a fair criticism. It's not, though. I mean, it's not been my experience with these people. Uh, obviously, you apparently have different experiences, but... In my experience, these debate me bros are perfectly willing to take valid criticism on board. But the issue is that they often get invalid criticism dogpiled on them, and they have the way the quote unquote marketplace of ideas works, they feel like they have to respond to that invalid criticism. And you don't want to reward that kind of behavior, so they kind of have to be shitty for it. I'm not 100% defending that behavior, but what I'm saying is that it's kind of understandable. Oh shit. That's an unfair criticism. We don't allow that in this church. None of that. Thank you very much. The second issue that I've seen being raised by some of these reformers is that the debate me bros quite often use as an argument for what they're doing is that they're bringing over chuds or right wingers or people who've fallen into bad circles who are kids and shit over to the side of the light and by doing so they open them up to being exposed to more of the leftist light side philosophy and ideas and through that other people in the sphere can then turn those people into actually you know, decent ones who don't use, well, homophobia, transphobia, sexism, racism, all that stuff. Who, do, who don't use that stuff on a regular basis. The problem being there, though, that the reformers say anyway, at least, is that a lot of times the debate me bros will decry those on the side who are supposed to be doing that work, who are supposed to be putting in the effort to try to turn these people into... This is an argument I've seen a lot, too, and I have seen no evidence for it. Again, I'm sure there are some shitty debate me bros out there, but if we're talking about the ones who have a major platform, who are the ones with most the target of these kind of attacks, they don't, they do exactly what you're saying they don't do. They talk about how you shouldn't use slurs, how, like, one of the big criticisms of Vosh is that he, he can sometimes use the R slur. He almost always uses it in reference to ideas or in reference to certain figures on the right. He, I, I'm not going to try to gla gaslight you and say that he doesn't use it to refer to people. He does. He definitely does. But it's always in a situation where he needs something particularly shocking and powerful. And the problem is if you take away these tools of being shocking and powerful, then you severely blunt their ability to do what they do. And I stand by that these debate me bros do do good work. They de-radicalize people, they bring people to the left, and Vosh's issue with woke scolds. I, I feel Xander Hall has gone a little overbo overboard on attacking woke scolds. I think that he has he has not done well in that, in my opinion. I think he, he went a little overboard on that arc. But when Vosh did it, he was specifically talking about people who only attack other lefties. These are people on the left who have a view of how the world should be, and when a lefty doesn't fulfill that view, they will spend 
all the time in the world attacking them for it, but they never consider attacking right-wingers about it. And first of all, this creates a very strong message of disunity and weakness in the left, and it can make the de-radicalization efforts of these people much less effective. Because the whole point of the Debate Me Bro is to show that someone on the left can be edgy, can be angry, can be hyperbolic, can be, you know, a little little rough, a little, you know, a little, little coarse, but still do good work and still have good beliefs and, and work towards good, out, good outcomes. But when you have these, these woke scolds, uh, and again, I'm not going to name names because I'm not trying to start drama. I'm talking about things from a, uh, as, I don't want to say intellectual because that sounds really pretentious, but educational aspect. When they attack these people, it basically makes it look like they're the, the, the people who are doing the de-radicalizing are not really representative of the left. So all that work in de-radicalizing doesn't do a thing because the people who are convinced they're not really on the left, you know, they, they leave or they, they walk out. It, that's the issue. And... What, I, what I'm going to love, I think, about this video is how Gushin is going to have infinite charitability for the SJWs and woke scolds who criticize people like Destiny and Vosh and Xander Hall. Well, don't get me wrong, there are definitely things to criticize about them, but zero charitability for the Debate Me Bros. And it, it's, no one is saying the Debate Me Bros are the only way to de-radicalize people, nor is anyone saying they're the best way. But when you make sh content like this, you're essentially saying that, that the Debate Me Bro method is a worse way of doing it. The ones who aren't going to vastly insult minorities who are already suffering, that they actually decry those people as woke scolds, as leftist fucking SJWs who don't understand the necessity of material conditions and the requirements of the modern society and that we kind of need to concede a lot of ground to this racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, all that kind of stuff. No one is asking you to cede ground to racism, transphobia, bigotry of any kind. Sorry, that, that's a complete straw man. All we're trying to do, I say we, all they're trying to do is show that there is another way to bring people to the left. And that if we expand out and bring people to the left, Vosh, and, and I really don't want to seem like a Vosh simp here, but again, the person whose content I've absorbed the most over the last year, he used an excellent analogy for this. These, these people on the left that Gushin is talking about, who are called woke scolds and SJWs, they look at someone with rough edges and say, oh, he won't fit in the left. Not understanding that we on the left are a rock tumbler. We tumble them around in our, in our societies and we smooth those edges over so that they're more acceptable to the wider left. Uh, and what's a debate me bro? A debate me bro is someone like, like Destiny here on Twitch. A guy who is just very aggressive in his rhetoric. Uh, they're almost always white males who will essentially just, if you have a disagreement, why don't you debate me about it, bro? Come on. Can't defend yourself. You don't really have a good idea, do you? So either def debate me or you lose. That's a debate me, bro. Iron word. As that, that's the kind of person that Gushin is trying to bring forth. Obviously, there's a lot more nuance to their actual performance, but that's the straw man version of their of the debate me bro that he is attacking here to, to be able to win on the classist front now this is another criticism that would work if we of course didn't realize that the class divide war is the biggest war and that minorities can go fuck themselves that's probably not very optics is it i probably should change that um we appreciate the concerns of the minority community. However, they have to understand that these people who call themselves woke scolds and SJWs just aren't representing them very well. And I mean, they, they make you look bad. And, and they're making you look like, well, it makes you look like the, 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 the baby bros are right, you know? It makes them look like they actually they have a good point about all these bloody transes and fucking gays and their desire to, you know, be always making people conform to shit and whatnot. I mean, 
Come on. You gotta, you've gotta con- Gushin, Gushin, God. This is, this is some really, really bad faith, and I expected so much better of Gushin. You've talked to Vosh. You've been in the community. You know his content is nothing like that. I swear to God, all these people watch Vosh's Thought Slime Meltdown a fucking year and a half ago. Well, actually, it's closer to about a year ago now. And decided, yep, that's Vosh. That, that's all we ever need to know about Vosh. He can never change. He can never learn from it. He can never change. All these debate me bros are the same. They never learn. If I could show Vosh on, on Twitch, I would demonstrate how much he has changed and learned. But I don't know Destiny. In, in, to be perfectly honest, Destiny has not changed for the better, although he's still not anything like what she's accusing him of here. But, no, this is, this, this is a straw man. Please, Gushin. You normally do such very research, very good, heavily researched work. Why did you just shit out this straw man argument? You can see some ground too, right? Unbelievable. These reformers. Ridiculous, let me tell you that much. And finally, the third big point that's brought me out of debate me, bros, is the argument of, are they actually being beneficial? Does this encouragement of this kind of attitude, this aggressive the fighting, the logic over emotion or any kind of moral or ethical qualms. Does this logic and argumentation issue? This is all straw man. This is all 100% a straw man. I'm not going to keep pausing it to mention that. This is 100% a bad faith straw man. And this desire to constantly be debating everybody over any minor disagreement, even when sometimes maybe the debate format isn't the best way of discussing those issues in any kind of, well, sense. Maybe those do require a longer, long-term reading and effort on your part to actually even basically understand what the hell's going on there. Maybe the encouragement of this kind of thing does lead to a very toxic community rising up whose entire view of leftist and online space, communism and socialism, is this basically mirror image of the right wing. That because they've come from right-wing circles where debating is the format to do, that they have just translated that format straight away across to the left, and they're still doing the exact same shit, but now... Leftist conflict is ongoing and never-ending. Yes, this is... It's almost entirely an online left phenomenon, but yes, this is a very good summation of it, Iron Word. How they just call themselves socialists instead. There are concerns, I think, to be raised there that sometimes these people are effectively just using a aesthetic look while engaging in the exact same tactics and problems that we would have with people from another political divide or side. And that, I think, is yet again, as, this, I call it, as most things on this list are, complete bullshit. Um, the Debate Me Bros are, are wise beyond our years, and they truly understand how to reach people. And if reaching people requires you to do bad things... Then I'll be honest, I'm only continuing to watch this because I'm hoping she brings it around in the third act and stops being bad faith. Because I still have a tiny bit of hope for... Gushin as a content creator. Then surely that that short-term negativity is going to be worth a long-term positivity, right? Surely these debate me bros have a have a plan worked out to, to, to get the people who come and join them over to maybe not using sexism or racism or transphobia or homophobia as much as they were beforehand. Surely they do. Perfect example I can talk about right now, because uh, I just thought of it. There is a person on YouTube, it is, or uh, not on YouTube, on Twitter. Uh, the Twitter handle is Cine. Uh They're Xander Hall's best friend, and they're a pretty cool person. Uh, they're uh, black non-binary. This is relevant. Cine was recently in a stream of Vosh's and said something to the effect of, y'all, he said the N-word. I, it was kind of a, a, a relatively innocuous context, but 
What did Vosh do? Did Vosh say, no, shouldn't really say that, but whatever. Did he ignore it? Or did he ban Sinny? Sinny got banned. Now, Sinny is not some recently reformed chud. Like I said, he's Xander Hall's, excuse me, they are Xander Hall's best friend. They were actually going pretty woke scoldy until they took Xander Hall's side in an argument against some woke scolds and kind of got a wake up call. So they're not some reformed chud who just stopped watching Ben Shapiro and started watching Vosh. This is someone who has been steeped in leftist spaces for at least a year and a half. And again, they're black. So, you know, the, the acceptable argument is that black people can say it. But Vosh is very careful about the community he, he cultivates, and he doesn't let anyone get away with it. So please, Gushin, tell me again how these white debate me bros are all cultivating a cabal of racist, sexist, transphobic fans who go out into the world and continue to spread that, but with a rose in their profile. Please, please continue this straw man. Jesus Christ these people who we worship as gods, as idols, as the, as the best of the best in our field, surely they, they must have something planned out because otherwise they would, well I mean otherwise the, this whole thing would be, would be ridiculous because we're basically relying upon them to do something that they have no desire and no real investment or, in, or incentive to do and, and we recognize it. Okay, you got a minute and a half to spin this around my dude. This is really disappointing. Oh my god. And again, for all these baby bros, it is the capitalist structures that we currently live in and we must abide by for now until we can destroy them by Marx's will. Th those capitalist structures do to a degree give them a reason to engage in the behaviors that they currently are. It gives them a good justification to be doing this kind of audience absorbing stuff because more audience means more people that can pay them money and watch them and increase their amount of social capital and economic capital potential gain and by doing that they can inevitably grow larger and larger with the argument being that growing larger allows them to do their job better. But if the entire job, if the corruption and the issues that the very heart of what they're trying to do are properly addressed, are they not just spreading a larger and larger toxic and problematic culture amongst people in the name of ostensibly the same thing that a lot of the people that argue against them are also fighting for? No, no obviously not. This whole, this whole document, complete and utter bullshit. This is the work of a great evil. Those who seek to, to destroy any gains that we have made in the marketplace of ideas. And we must be wary, and we must be constantly look out for anyone who dares question them. Because if they question them, that makes them the enemy. Because they are hurting our ability to function properly. They are hurting our capability to do things the way that we want to do them. And god damn the criticisms, okay? Well, debate me bro the criticisms, I don't exactly know what the religious aspect around that is. Anyways, thank you for coming to this sermon on- Okay. Seriously, that was some bad faith. They really relying on an error of authority and intentional speaking patterns and implies civility. It seems fake as fuck strong. Yeah. Like I said, Gushin is usually better faith than this. This is a shocking turn of events. And... Like, one of the big differences between the Debate Me Bro left and the SJW left, which is a totally arbitrary distinction, because, of course, they're all SJWs according to the fascists, is that when... Okay. If Vosh has a mortal enemy on the left, it is thoughts line. I'm not going to get into the whole deal here, but Vosh and Thought Slime clashed pretty early. It's one of the biggest sources of drama in his, uh, it, with relation to Vosh, the, the fallout from that. Vosh, to this day, does not say that you shouldn't watch Thought Slime. 
that you shouldn't engage with his content. He says he doesn't like it, he doesn't think it's that good, that it, it's, it's basic and whatnot, but he doesn't say it is bad and that you shouldn't watch it, that it's harmful. Whereas the people on the, le- on the, the SJW left will tell you, don't even think about watching Vosh. If you watch him, he is a transphobe, he's a horrible bigot, just I don't know why anyone would want to watch him. And the reason why they do that is because if you actually watched Vosh, you would find out that he's none of the things described in this video. Same with Destiny, to a lesser extent. Same with Xander Hall. Same with just about anyone else that gets tarred with this brush. This is a shockingly unnuanced straw man attack on a group that does good work. Not the only group that does good work. Not the only good work that's done on YouTube on the left. But they do good work. I expected better, Gushin. I really, really did. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you liked it, like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you. See you next time.